sit down first. You're a politician. Come and sit down. You don't post it. That's the ah, okay, I'll post it, it, but you watch it first. <laughs> you watch it as if you like it. Now come now. Confession time. Come now. Show some shine. I know. Good. Come, come. You see, that's why I'm come here. That's why you have me. I present. I can help you ease into these things. Come. Let's talk about something very important. Come. Come now. Let's talk about something. <laughs> <important>. <laughs> Hi guys, you have to move. I don't want that thing to show. <laughs> hi guys, this is Belle. Say hi. It's my tattoo partner. We have matching tattoos. Show them, show them. And it's not my boyfriend. Imagine, he was my boyfriend. What would do? Let me kiss. Should I kiss you? <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be talking about the slave and master mentality that we have in the Nigerian entertainment industry. And but funny enough, my experience is not in the same industry, it's somewhere else, but it's still just as important. Now, do you know how people hmm, okay? I think this this thing actually started from the Bible, where they say, you know, take somebody, train the person, start seven years, let the person go and you know, release the person, give the person things that are enough for him to actually start his own business. Okay. But Nigerians took their own on a whole different levels. Now, my Igbo brothers and sisters do it too. You go and serve somebody and then they let you go. Hmm. But in the entertainment industry, you have become slave for life. You now see them telling big, big man and woman, big deal, that they should go and sweep or wash plates. <laughs> Bells, tell them your own story. Bells is an artist. He's going to blow very soon. In Jesus' name, say amen. Amen. <laughs> he has finally spoken. So, say I'm touching his tattoos. Oh. <laughs> okay, so tell tell us what's your experience with you know about this slave and master mentality. <coughs> I will, I'm not going to. I will edit this part out. But I behave yourself and talk. Sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, come. Just talk to me like you're talking normally. I can't be talking normal. I'm talking to a girl actually. <laughs> like, because I talk to a girl, you cannot be normal. Oh my god. He's not a comedian, no. Not mind okay, you. the thing is, uh, we need to stop this thing. Mm. Like, it's really bad. I want to learn certain trade, for example, from somebody. Production, tailoring, this or that. Because and you're telling me to come and wash plates for you. Am I your husband? <laughs> well, let me give you my own experience. When I was serving during my you know one year compulsory youth service in Nigeria. Okay, so during my NYSC, I thought okay, I had enough time on my hands because I was teaching, I was teaching chemistry, and I used to go to school like two or three times a week. Okay. So I had a few, you know, I had free time on my own. Like, okay, let me use that free time and learn something. I thought, okay, since I love clothes, let me learn how to sew. Mm -hmm. So I went to this lady who was staying close to my place. She had a child, apparently. She had just given birth. Her child was a few months old. And I didn't let her know that I had a child too. She mm -hmm. gets. So she probably felt, oh, young girl, she can't do anything. She can't do any house. She can't do anything. So when I came the first day, I told her, like, okay, I should come. Then um, the next morning, then uh, we'll talk about payments and stuff. I was like, no, Allah. So when I got there that morning, I got there really early. She was not here there yet. I got there like eight. She wasn't there. When she finally came, she now told me, eh, that eh, I, I should take broom and sweep the place. I'm like, <laughs> okay. No, wahala. I took broom, I swept. <laughs> Funny, do you know why I was surprised? Because mm. there was another girl there and she's like, eh, the girl is your senior. senior. Like, <laughs> I know that shit. <laughs> I'm like, uh uh, no, I didn't say anything. I took broom, I sweat. After sweeping, she was like, eh, ah, that she wants to eat though. I think she was pregnant for the second one at the point. So she's like, ah, that she's hungry or she wants to eat. I should take money and go and buy water. I'm like, okay. I took the water, came, I bought water for her. I now sat down. She refused to show me anything. And the funny thing is that I already knew the basics of sewing because my mom actually did know how to sew, but because she died, I didn't learn. So she's not like, eh, eh, that's eh, this lady that whenever I come, I should, I should greet the lady and see. I don't know what happened. I think she asked me to call the lady. So I called the lady by her name. So I should greet the lady and see. I'm like, okay, no, I'm not doing this. She, I was like, I'm sorry, I have to leave here. Then you dropped out. I just walked away and I didn't go back. Dropped now, out. the funny thing is that this lady on a good day would Did see me. Out? I dropped out of the school of tailoring. <laughs> <laughs> this lady on a good day would see me and she can't talk to me. My kid is older than her, than her kids. So, because women actually look at these things as 
kind of seniority. Mm -hmm. So in all ramifications, I had a degree, I was serving, there was no how this lady was any better. But I was willing to actually be humble and learn. Mm. But then she was overdoing it. And mm. I think that's the problem we have in this industry. You see artists being used as houseboys and housegirls by their label owners and producers and stuff. Like he was told to wash plates. <laughs> As an upcoming artist, he doesn't want to tell you his story, so let me tell you. They told him to wash pants. Bro, don't tell to wash pants. Please, I'm off it. I do not have no money. Which pants did you say she wore? They didn't tell you to wash pants. Which pants? They didn't tell you to wash pants. He's practically running on the floor laughing. Okay, you need to, to wash pants. It's just a joke, Oya. Come. <laughs> come now. It's not a joke. Oh, oh. Hey, my God. Oya, come and tell us your own experience. Come and tell them that it's not pants that you told you to wash. Come. Jesus. Come now. Don't put me inside trouble already. He said, I'm putting me inside trouble. Anyway, since he doesn't want to talk, <laughs> this industry is really funny. We have this, like I said, hey, slave and master mentality. <laughs> Don't post it though. <laughs> I'm not do again. Oh yeah, come and tell us about this. Story. <laughs> come and tell us this. Story. Oh yeah, go and spoil my post. I'm posting this video I like. This. <laughs> I hope you're laughing with me. Anyway, I, I, please, that was a joke. <laughs> he didn't say anything about pants. I was just joking. But the truth of the matter is that in this industry, big, you know, industry heavyweights have actually come out to say that they have been, well, their talent have been misused by their elders. Or those who are more knowledgeable by them, more, or those who are more knowledgeable by, by than them in the industry, just because they were starting out really, and it's even twice as hard for us ladies because I've been to okay, like when I actually started my journey, when I went to be an OAP, I went to be on radio. I met this guy. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna call his name, but he's not very tall and he's very ugly. That should be enough pointers. Anyway, I met him and I was like, oh, I'd like to intern with this radio station and this is and he's like, oh, no problem I'll give you I'm, I'm very busy now. I'll give you a place and time to come and see me I'm like, okay, no wahala and then it turns out I was actually going to his friend's house Who was a producer and this guy is an OAP and his friend is a, a producer So I went there and next thing I knew I'm in a room and he's closing the door and he's taking off his pants I'm like, wait What's going on? That is how bad these things are. And I have friends who have said the same thing, especially ladies who have said the same thing. It doesn't make sense. And you know the idea of them conquering you. That's how it works. You see people saying things like they told me to go and fetch water or they told me to go and sweep. You should have maids for this. And if you don't have maids, it is your domestic business. Why would you subject someone who's coming to learn from you to such, you know. So you see some of them, when they later in life, when they're not so big, they're no longer as big or they're no more as important, these guys who supposedly learned from them refused to help them why because they were not treated fairly when they were with them that's how bad it is now this slave and master mentality in the industry has to stop if you're helping somebody help them because you're a good person and you know your reward is in heaven now if your reward comes on earth better good but you shouldn't want instant gratification by subjecting that person to inhuman practices let me just put it like that so well um yeah i've been told i never say subscribe so guys subscribe like tell me what you like to say i hope you had enough laughs like i did today thanks to bells for coming and running away <laughs> and no please they didn't tell him to wash pants <laughs> you guys should not but i love bells and i love you guys so thank you this is her royal freshness stay fresh she like my bandana it's my sister oh let me blame her if it's not good it's my sister if it's good it's me <laughs> i love you Bells, are you back? Hi, Bells. <laughs> <laughs> Say bye. Bye. <laughs>